This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 433, The Evolution of the Meaning of Money, by Jacob Lund Fisker of earlyretirementextreme.com. And I am your narrator, Dan, here each weekday, reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And if you've got some ideas for us, some topic requests, please do come and share those at oldpodcast.com. Before we get to today's post, this episode is brought to you by Jet Smarter, the mobile app revolutionizing the private air travel industry. Jet Smarter lets you create on-demand flights anywhere on the planet or reserve seats on shared flights worldwide, all in minutes from a single mobile app. Download the Jet Smarter app today and use the code SMART to discover a smarter way to fly. For full details, visit jetsmarter.com. Now let's hear today's post as we optimize your life. The Evolution of the Meaning of Money by Jacob Lund Fisker of EarlyRetirementExtreme.com. One of the interesting things to me is to understand specifics as they relate to a greater whole. In short, to see the bigger picture. Another word for this is abstraction, but abstraction does not always apply. Consider the field of expertise, morals, or simply personal development. In those cases, specifics cannot simply be abstracted, Rather, there seems to be a trajectory from one step to the next with several overlaps, where the next step sometimes grows out as an extension of the previous step, and other times as a reaction to the previous step. It could easily be argued that there's no trajectory. Some people never change, grow, decay, and thus their knowledge, skills, and attitudes stay the same for most of their life. I know many rocks like that, people too. Over time, I have definitely noticed a specific change in terms of my attitude towards money. I would divide these attitudes into four stages. I've also noticed that different people's attitudes about money sometimes collide, just like different types of morals collide when one person is motivated by being good, the next by the law, the third by agreement, and the last by doing right. As such, I have a lot of fun taking stabs at emergency funds and index investing because I see them completely differently than those who are just discovering them. Stage zero. At this stage, money is something you don't have, but which you want so you can spend it on something. An apt description of the attitude towards money at this stage is that it burns a hole in your pocket. Credit, if used, is typically not handled wisely. The focus is on the minimum monthly payment because that is what you need to pay. If credit is not used, money is saved up to be spent. In this case, the savings account will have a swat tooth pattern to it. This stage does most of the struggling because it is very much about living in the moment. With liabilities, a job loss will cause instant problems. Stage one. Most personal finance education concerns stage one. In order to avoid the struggling, a six-month emergency fund is established to protect against job loss. People also start saving money for some distant retirement where they plan to spend the money in their accounts. This is essentially a somewhat wiser way of living at stage zero the person has realized that it may not always be possible to work. What these two stages have in common, though, is the work to spend or earn to buy thinking. They are mainly different in that whereas stage zero does not care about net worth, I'm guessing because it's effectively zero, stage one is busy adding up everything from retirement accounts to houses, cars, jet skis, and jewelry. Stage zero and stage one are different in degree. Stage one is essentially stage zero with some savings that are only used in special circumstances. It takes a leap of imagination to reach the next two stages. Stage two. Here, it is realized that money can be used to make money to exactly the same degree as work can be used to make money. The $100 payout in dividends every three months from a $10,000 investment is exactly the same as the $100 paid for, say, eight hours of work. People in stage one will object and say they can't live on $100 every three months. Good point. To stay in stage one thinking, in order to pull off stage two, you need a 250-month emergency fund. This is so far off the six-month emergency fund of stage one that it is not even a difference of degree. It is difference in kind. Different rules apply now. Now, most people will not be able to save 250 months worth of regular expenses, say $60,000 a year, over a lifetime. There are two solutions earn 10 times more, or spend 10 times less. Not everybody can do the former, but everybody can do the latter. 
Once it is realized that the money you get in stage two from dividends, interest, covered calls, or capital gains buys exactly the same, actually the tax rate is typically lower, guess who writes the tax laws, as money earned by work, stage two is achieved. A person in stage two is equally interested in net worth, but only counts the assets that can effectively be used to make money, such as stocks or funds in broker accounts and rental property. House, car, bling bling, and other consumables are not counted. Stage three. This stage moves beyond net worth. Here you own businesses, not stocks or funds. The businesses pay you and you are much less concerned with net worth and much more concerned about cash flow and the quality of earnings, whether they be from rentals or stocks. Much effort will be spent thinking about how to maximize cash flow based on assets rather than cash flow based on earned income. In this stage, an additional 1% of return can mean a big change in income. A 10% drop in the market can wipe out years of earlier savings. Daily stock market fluctuations easily exceed the monthly paycheck, and yet you don't worry about that. Stage two and three are also fairly similar, with stage three representing a more sophisticated version of stage two. The difference is in the way the assets are managed. Stage three is more active. Stage four. This stage moves beyond money. Either you have so much money you can't possibly spend it all, or you have found ways to live without using money at all. Maybe you're a billionaire or maybe you're a monk. If stage one is struggle independence and stage two and three are financial independence, stage four is economic independence and it is different in kind from stage two and three. You just listened to the post titled The Evolution of the Meaning of Money by Jacob Lund Fisker of EarlyRetirementExtreme.com. And thanks again to our sponsor for today's episode, Jet Smarter, the mobile app revolutionizing the private air travel industry. Unlike jet cards or fractional ownership, Jet Smarter lets you create on-demand flights anywhere on the planet or reserve seats on shared flights worldwide, all in minutes from a single mobile app. JetSmarter is also the only private flight service that lets you share your extra charter seats with fellow members in exchange for flight credit. No prepaid hours, no expensive brokers, just innovative air travel at your fingertips so you can experience aviation as it was meant to be. With JetSmarter, flying private is now within reach. Download the JetSmarter app today and use the code SMART to become part of the world's largest members-only private aviation community and discover a smarter way to fly. For full details, visit jetsmarter.com. Again, that's jetsmarter.com. And that's it for today. Thanks, as always, for being here and listening. I'll see you in the Thursday show tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more, from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.